Hi there, I'm Terry McCann and you are wanting to get some helpful tips for conducting internal audits for quality management systems such as ISO 9001 2015. When you did your ISO 9001 2015 lead auditor training, they probably spent a lot of time on the ISO 9001 requirements and how to do third-party certification audits and very little else. Therefore, it is a common but understandable mistake for newly trained lead auditors to conduct internal audits as if they were conducting a certification or surveillance audit by a third-party auditor. I know because I did it myself for a while. So today, I'm giving you a handful of important considerations to make your first internal audit less daunting or if you have been auditing for a while but treating your internal audits as mini certification audits then there is definitely something here for you too. If your organization is indeed ISO 9001 certified then an accredited auditor has certified that your QMS is ISO 9001-2015 conformant. You do not have to do that all over again. What you have to do now is verify from evidence that the people in your organization are executing on the procedures and processes that are laid out in your quality management system your QMS. It should go without saying that you need to be familiar with your organization's QMS and the roles and responsibilities defined in its processes. First off, your QMS should have procedures and processes covering internal audits. You need to conduct your internal audits in conformity with that. If those procedures or processes are deficient, then you should write up an appropriate finding. But the audit process as laid out in your QMS should include something about having a schedule of internal audits. A good practice is to have an internal audit every quarter of the year where each audit covers at least a quarter or more of the QMS. Your internal audit should follow a plan that you, the lead auditor, have drawn up based on the scheduled content of internal audits. This plan is reviewed and approved by top management in the organization before the opening meeting of your internal audit. An important item to be audited in each audit is to follow up on corrective actions for non-conformities or NCs found in the previous audit. Your QMS should have one or more processes defined for the handling of corrective actions, including having a corrective action plan and a planned closing date is your organization following that process. All NCs from previous audits, especially third party audits, are the most important corrective actions to follow up on. But a sample of other NCs should be reviewed as well, especially those originating from customer complaints. You cannot audit every single operational thing that an organization does. Have a system of sampling. This could be random sampling where, for example, you throw dice for your starting point and then take every nth instance, every so many instances after that to ensure a certain percentage coverage. An alternative to random sampling is risk-based sampling, where you focus on items that are safety related or that suggest significant financial risk if not performed in a satisfactory manner. A good option is to use a combination of risk-based and random sampling. 
For random sampling, I personally like to use the website random.org. When you think you have found a nonconformity, an NC, be very clear in your own mind what the requirement is in terms of your QMS process. As an example, if the QMS states document the customer's training needs in such and such a file in the customer's folder, but this is simply being held in somebody's emails instead, then write up your finding clearly showing where the requirement can be found in the QMS chapter and verse. Somebody following in your footsteps should be able to locate the same evidence that you used and reproduce your findings and from the evidence come to the same conclusion as you did. As far as possible without being argumentative, the manager or lead responsible for the process should be in agreement that the requirement has not been met. Remember, an important rule of auditing is that an auditor may not audit their own work. If you are the sales manager in the organization or in charge of quality control, then you may not audit those departments if you have performed or signed off on any of the work that is being audited. I use those by way of example only. This means that you will need to train one or more other people in your organization to be part of an audit team which you would lead. They do not have to have third party lead auditor training. They do need to have some introductory training in the requirements of the ISO 9001 standard and familiarity with your organization's QMS. To preserve their freedom to audit without fear of repercussion, they should not be in your reporting structure. Even if you are well respected, there should be no perception of a conflict of interest. When you move on, your replacement in the organization may not be such a nice person as you. In the meantime, while you are the only auditor, you can begin auditing other parts of the organization. For all the same reasons, it is not a good idea for you to interview personnel who report directly to you. Look for the positive, where people are doing a good job, where the QMS is working well for the organization. Make sure that this comes out in the beginning of your audit report. Very importantly, remember that we audit the system, not the people. If there is an NC, it is because the system has allowed it to happen. Ensure that people associated with an NC are given an opportunity to explain why it might not be an NC or that they agree that it is indeed a non-conformity. They will, in all likelihood, be involved in the corrective action and so the organization needs them to be on board during root cause analysis. Remember, every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. W. Edwards Deming quoting Arthur Jones. If you have not watched my YouTube video, A Common Mistake in ISO Training, I strongly recommend that you do. Nothing else that I can tell you is more important than what I say in that short training video. If you have found this video helpful, consider sharing it with a friend or colleague. I'm Terry McCann.